Hey guys, welcome back to Collective Perspective, episode 67. We're going to talk about, this is Craig's idea, we're going to talk about market manipulation. Where did the uh, inspiration come from, sir? Yeah, so market manip manipulation is, uh, you know, a phrase thrown around a lot in collectibles hobbies, um, you know, whether justified or not. Um, but uh, right now it's definitely a hot topic, um, as many of you probably know, about Piglet's big game. Uh, this has been a uh, a wild thing to see over the last couple of weeks. Um, so should I get should I tell the story of Piglet's big game Let's do it. to set the precedent? Yeah. So what it is is um, it started out because a Twitter user posted this really funny ominous song off the soundtrack off YouTube, and they're like, "What the hell is this game even about?" And it was like this really like creepy, eerie, Silent Hill sounding track, and. Um, then after that, it was followed up by people starting to post gameplay of it, being like, what is going on in this game? It's like, it's like a weird, almost feels like a weird, like, Silent Hill parody with Pooh and, <laughs> and Piglin. It's super strange, and there's just all this unsettling music, unsettling atmosphere. Uh, Piglet's running around in this decrepit, like, mansion. Uh, she, there's, like, a, like a, a gameplay effect where it's, like, the more damage Piglet has, the faster they run. It's super weird. Like, actual, like, survival horror stuff, and it's funny. And just because of these tweets and clips, um, it's funny because, uh, you know, you and I were talking about it. We're like, huh, wouldn't it be funny if this, you know, all of a sudden disappears off of eBay? And the next day it did, and there's no copies on eBay. All of a sudden, we're like, oh my god, people are actually buying this thing up. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, you know, the first one gets posted that wasn't there already for like 300 bucks or something like that, and it sells like instantly. So, all of a sudden, you know, then other people start bringing it up and selling it for more money because of that one sale, and it's selling for hundreds of dollars when all this time it was like a 10 to $15 game at most. Um, so, overnight, this game just absolutely exploded. If you look at the. Um, I was going to say, I don't know if price charting has up-to-date values on this right now. I'm going to look real quick because I want to see if the chart looks bonkers for it or not. <laughs> yeah, I was taking notes for this episode a couple days ago. It had not updated, so let us no, know. No, it has not. So if you look, yeah, right now it still says $14 for <laughs> PS2 and 17 for GameCube. But if you go look at the CIB sold listings, oh no, still not up-to-date. So it's behind, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it is selling for hundreds of dollars. So uh, this brought up the topic of market manipulation in the hobby. Um, you know, Reddit's going on fire right now. R slash game collecting is burning to the ground. If you post one right now, I was looking revelation. at it today. If you post, oh, I've, someone was like, today, I found this for $15. Can't believe it with all the crazy sales right now on eBay. He got downvoted. He, had, he got downvoted to heck for that. He, like, why aren't they happy for him? I don't understand. Because he's going to be a dirty reseller. This, uh, and, you know, of course, Get the Greg is in the freaking comments, and he's like, hey, if you're, if you're quick, you can still get, like, 100 bucks for that. And uh, <laughs> downvoted to heck. Everybody's like, stop, please stop. We don't like this. To be fair, I think there's, like, a downvote bot for him in that Reddit. <laughs> like, if you post a comment, it just automatically gets some downvotes. I don't know what the problem is. I guess they're just tired of seeing it. You know, there's probably multiple posts every day for Piglet's big game, and uh, I don't... Like, everyone's like, wow, bought this while I could. Yeah. Like, this price is sustainable, which we'll get to, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, what... I'm gonna just give you guys a quick definition, because this these two words get thrown around so often, and it's ridiculous. It's not quite as bad. It's probably worse than um, money laundering, but here we go. <laughs> Market manipulation is the act of artificially changing prices in a market to mislead investors and gain an advantage. Um, would you say that there was an act of artificially changing prices in a market for Piglet's big game? Um, yeah, I think I would actually. I don't think that it's going to sustain... But by definition, that's what happened. All the copies disappeared. I'm sure it was, you know, not everybody, but there's probably, you know, a handful of, you know, smart people that are like, oh, this is viral right now. I could take advantage of this situation. And a lot, all these copies sold out, and then all of a sudden they start selling for a lot more. Um, you know, obviously we don't have definitive proof if, like, it was one or two or three or even ten guys buying up all these copies and reselling them all themselves. But... Um, you know, all the copies did sell, and then somebody was able to set the precedent of this is a $300 game now, <laughs> which is kind of interesting, because 
it worked. You know, it's their copies aren't still selling for three hundred dollars, but they're selling for hundreds when it was a ten to fifteen dollar game. So the person that started that got that one big sale going, um, they've they've been able to get it rolling for what at least a week now. So yeah, kind of interesting. It, it you know I think that it, it's crazy that it's. I blame more on the people that were dumb enough to buy it than the ones selling it at a high price. I think it's much more on the buyer because it's extraordinarily obvious that that's what was happening at that time is everyone bought it because it was a viral game on Twitter and then now there's no copies available. So all of a sudden it's a rare game. Like, come on. So... I think the if any market market manipulation went down, it was possibly this. It it could have been shill bidding on this three hundred and fifty dollars sale. There was an auction that I think you're referencing that went for three hundred and fifty five or something like that. Uh, that seller ended up relisting the game, so that never even sold. That was either shill bidding, totally possible. You know, he could have marked it up to the roof so that it got hype, or someone mm-hmm. else could have done it. Um, or no, I think that's it. Like, or or no, the 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 or for that was someone might have just not paid, right? Like, also true. It could have been the seller, it could have been the buyer. We have no idea. There was some market manipulation there because it looks like a game sold for three hundred fifty dollars, but it really didn't. Um, yeah. But when the definition of this saying like artificially changing prices, I think that would be like if someone. If the owner of price charting was like, okay, we're going to go in here and mark this as $380 right now, CIB, that's the going rate. I think that would be what they're saying here as the act of artificially changing prices. Um, True, but shill bidding is an artificial price, right? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I don't think it matters really who does it. I think it's just... The, that's fair oh uh, i mean it, it's simple as putting the number out there i think right counts as market manipulation if you want to be broad enough to go by the definition that's true it creates this price memory for us as collectors um and so every time we see piglet's big game now we're gonna be like oh that game was hundreds of dollars it it already affected the market immensely even if it didn't sell how many people mm-hmm. saw the 350 versus how many people saw it get relisted you no one no one saw that um that makes a huge impact on the market for sure um so something interesting about like collectibles versus market manipulation in the stock market uh Mm -hmm. there is plenty of laws in place for the stock market you have the securities exchange act of 1934 i'm not a freaking lawyer i just did a little googling before (laughs) this let's just get that out of the way um you can't do things. There are certain things that are very illegal in the stock market, but you can invest in video games and resell and manipulate the market, and it's going to be legal most of the time. There's nothing preventing you from shill bidding. There's nothing preventing you from uh, pumping up a game on YouTube and just hyping it to the moon and being like, guys, this game's going to go to be so rare, so expensive. You can You can do that, I think. Again, not a lawyer. Don't go do it on my it's watch. It's douchey, but it's not illegal. It's just kind of immoral. <laughs> right. Yeah. So ethical versus legal is definitely um, definitely two different conversations with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a couple videos from Reserved Investments. I would recommend if anyone is interested. He has a couple of videos relating this topic to collectibles, talking about how it's different from the stock market. But uh, as some examples would be like withholding all of the supply of something from the market and then when demand is highest and supply is lowest that's when you start to drip feed it into the market um this is usually multiple parties coming together and controlling the supply not just one person so if there were like a bunch of um a bunch of pokemon card sellers got together and they had they had just a massive stock of a certain card and they weren't releasing them to the public you know they were holding them for a few months or something and then when the hype got high enough or when the demand got high enough they started to release them slowly that's going to make the the price skyrocket it's going to make people 
uh, pay more because they've been waiting for months to, to purchase a card. Um, that is one example of market manipulation. Uh, happens all the time and is probably very legal. It does happen, especially with Pokemon cards. So that was a good example. <laughs> it's a very easy tactic for anyone with a lot of, like, with enough money. Not even, like, a lot of money. You just have to have enough money. Uh, pretty sure I know of, like, GBA collectors that have done this. It's just something that, oh, that happens. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Like when you bought uh, two Magical Quest 3s? Manipulated the heck out of that market. I did manipulate the market, <laughs> that's right. Especially when I kept one and sold one to a friend. That was... That was a really dick move of what me. What an evil man you are. <laughs> uh, another form of market manipulation is setting a floor on an item. I learned of this from Reserved Investments. I have never actually heard of this. Um, but it makes sense. Basically, let's say there's a heritage auction going on, and you see, oh, there's a Castlevania 9.6A. And you have this goal, because you have multiple Castlevanias that are 9.6A or higher on your shelf. So your goal is to keep that at a certain price or higher forever so that you don't end up losing money or whatever. So you're going to bid, let's say, $1,500 every time that game in that condition or better gets listed. There's nothing wrong with that, but you don't really have an intention to purchase that. Um, you are pretty much manipulating the market. You're setting prices in a way. You know, you're making sure a price is always at a certain floor yeah like making sure it never sells for less than that so it retains the value again nothing illegal about that um i would say this is like borderline ethical i don't even know if there's anything wrong with this especially if you're planning to pay for that item if you do end up winning right you just have yeah, I, another i don't one. know if it's ethical but i do think it's psychotic <laughs> i think you might be a crazy person if you're doing that this is not a collector thing to do this is you're an no. investor for sure at this point Yeah, 100 percent um sometimes you'll win you'll have to pay it yeah for sure and other i other examples buying your own item to have it show up in ebay sold listings shield bidding we were just talking about it um price fixing this one is probably legal and probably shouldn't be, but like just agreeing with your competitors to set the same price for the same item. Um, I don't have an example, but if if there's like a rare Game Boy game and you and a few of your collector or investor friends have a bunch of them stocked up, uh, you could make sure that you guys all listed at the same price. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like laws for gas stations that they all have to be like. I, I forget what it is. They all have to be like close to each other or something in value. I don't know. I'm not even going to try it to to recite this, but um, price fixing totally happens. Um, I haven't witnessed it, but I'm sure it happens all the time. Probably. Uh, but yeah, we brought up price charting. If you were, if we found out that um, that the guy who owns price charting is like out there setting prices on specific games and he's like going in manually changing them and then listing them on ebay or something or helping it was his piglet all along <laughs> <laughs> he's helping his friends out or he's helping himself out so that he can list things uh, and make more profit yeah like that is no one's going to argue that that is objectively unethical market manipulation mm -hmm. um the big example as brought forth by wada and carl jobs is uh, the Federal Trade Commission requires you to fully disclose the connection you have to a product being sold that you're endorsing. That's why you constantly see uh, things on YouTube nowadays that are like, this is a sponsored video, There's this is a promotional thing, like mm -hmm. stuff on every social media. You see it all the time now. Yeah, you have to disclose any kind of advertisement. And as we all learned from Carl Jobs' videos, there were some definitely unethical and most likely illegal things going on there. Um, so all of this is to say, like, yes, market manipulation is real and happens all the time. But not every expensive game being sold higher than you want to pay for it is market manipulation. I'm sorry to tell you that, uh, r slash game collecting. I think that uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. But I will say, Craig told me to sell my piglet, and you best believe I sold my piglet's big, big game. Minus one. For the game collection, for the GameCube set, no longer has it.
Yeah, I uh, would highly recommend. It's going to be too late by the time this video is up, but true. You guys, if you have Piglet on PS2 or GameCube <laughs> and you live in North America, you should have sold that crap by now, man. Yeah, because. Like I said, you are a fool if you are buying that game high, but you're also a fool not to sell high. Because this game, it might not ever plummet back down to $10, but it's definitely not going to stay above 100 I, I, I can promise you that. <laughs> I think it's going to settle about $50 in very, very soon. Like 2024, maybe. Maybe early 2025. Yeah, it's not going to stay high. And the best part about it is all the people that are buying this game... It's going to be funny when they realize that all this horror stuff is just one stage. <laughs> it's not the whole game, so. I think that this is an incredibly interesting exercise to see just how crazy horror collectors are and like how oh yeah, one two tweets can like in, impact the market like this. It has been super interesting. You know, obviously we always think about JRPGs when we think of like the most collectible genre, but sometimes I think that horror might ri rival it overall. I sometimes I think it's just as much of like a behemoth in terms of the amount of crazy expensive games. It is the RPGs, it is the horror, and it is the shmups. Probably in that order. <laughs> all, all about the shmups, baby. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? I don't know. I mean, I think you covered it for the most part going over, you know, the literal definitions of it. And, uh, I mean, you know, people are upset. Unfortunately, it happens. Uh, in this situation, I'd like to reiterate, don't be mad at the sellers. Be mad at the people that are actually spending the money on it when it's, for no reason, should ever be worth the amount that it's worth at the moment. So, don't be mad at the Christians. Be mad at the the people who purchased from Christian. Yeah, man, I could have put it up for auction at 99 cents. It still would have sold for 100 plus. At least. At least. And it's like, that's, that's crazy. It's so crazy. Because I don't know how you just couldn't realize... That that's not a good decision. But <laughs> the internet is a is a big weird place, and some of y'all, some of y'all need to learn how to read. I'll say that much. Uh, you know, on Mercari, I don't know if you've used it in the last six months. You can put comments on listings now. Can you really? That's fun. It's it's toxic for sure. <laughs> oh God, I bet. So I put up the the listing on Mercari and eBay, but I put it up on Mercari. Someone said. Scam price, fifteen dollar game, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can actually react. Can you comment back? Huh? Can you comment you back? Can. <laughs> Were you like, I know what I have. I didn't respond. No I just balls. I reacted with a crying emoji. <laughs> That's because funny. of course you can react to comments on Mercari. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Mercari is such a cursed app. <laughs> it is really bad. Good times. All right, I guess we can wrap it up with this. The the definition of another phrase you guys love to use, money laundering. The concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving foreign banks or legitimate Ill, wait, yeah, legitimate businesses. What do you think is going on with Piglet's big game that could call this just, I need to go find out anyone who commented money laundering on any piglet tweets or whatever you guys are losing your minds yeah. if you've learned how to money launder via piglet's <laughs> big game you deserve to get away with it you can't launder money <laughs> over ebay it's it's out there for the world to see it's just it's also like $200 the <laughs> most so i wonder if like Man, I wonder how many... We should have looked at the pop report for Piglet's big game. I wonder if there's any graded copies. Oh my god. I hope that there's, like, none. That'd be so funny. Now people are rushing to get it graded. That would be amazing. Doing the Warp Star tier to get it back next day. <laughs> you know what? I um I felt even more comfortable selling mine when I found out that there's a reg card. Because mine didn't have a registration card. I can't wait to rebuy it for a fraction of the cost with the registration card. <laughs> I, so, let's say, hypothetically, this game continues to climb, becomes a $500 game, and it just stays that <laughs> way. Because this game really was like low print, just nobody realized it, right? Let's say, hypothetically, would you still finish your GameCube set, or would you, would you be like, F it, it's not even worth it? 
Oh man, would I spend? What would you do? Would I spend five hundred dollars on Piglet's big game? I I'm gonna tell you right now. You s- what? You spent five hundred on much stupid. I was gonna say. So. I don't know if it gets much stupider than that. I uh, I don't think I could let one thing prevent me from finishing the set. You know, I would get it done one way or another. That's valid. <laughs> That's valid. Yeah, there is like a little two percent of me that was a little concerned about that, <laughs> but you're like, what if piglets to the moon? <laughs> it never comes back to Earth. <laughs> Man. All right, let's wrap it up. Thank you guys for checking this episode (laughs) out. We will be back uh, probably in about a week for episode 68. Take care, y'all.